Salutation my comment, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the Aura's Oracle direct test commentary as well as the reflective analysis. I just came back from work and then I thought I'd do this video now. So let's get started. Right, let me play it. So you can see the title here and um, if you guys didn't know, uh, I actually uh, made the title from scratch itself. So you can see the clouds coming in and that was done in After Effects with 3D motion and everything. So I got like a template of the one Ross sign and towards the end of the film you can see the Aura's Oracle title as well and you can see the clouds coming in. Just thought I should let you guys know. So you know, the video starts off with main different establishing shots of our protagonist in different locations which is accompanied with a voiceover. The shots of our scenery are decrepit and eerie such as the broken gates. As I said, the audience, what kind of film this is going to be. As well as this, the narration fits in with the footage. And because this is a Harry Potter spin off, I could be sort of discreet with the explanation of certain things as the potheads would sort of pick it up, such as the last great war prior to the actual Harry Potter films. The non digesting music that is used in this film is original content produced by my friend Alex, as well as my cousin Yusuf, and some of it it's by me, which I had to change and stuff. The reason why I wanted original music for this piece was to avoid copyright, obviously, and I thought it would sort of disassociate the innocence of the famous earlier Potter films, which was very light hearted and thing and funny and stuff so this music sort of creates a darker theme yeah the missing scene is very eerie as it was shot in natural lighting however filtered when i was editing it it's created a harsh ambience to the film which mirrors with the narrative entrancing the viewers with the surrounding and its atmosphere what do you do when you lose everyone you love and the fact that the colour is drained from the footage it also unnerves the audience as they can feel the bitter harsh reality of the world now here you can see the fact that I did Elm Street and the reason why that was was because this film is a much more darker short film I wanted to sort of pay homage to um, Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street that's why I did Elm Street which was next to my grandma's house I, I love doing 3D text basis kind of stuff so I tried to make the font sort of be on the floor and it's really annoying because on the actual you know edit in Premiere all the text had shadow on so it looked a lot more realistic whereas here it, it, it doesn't because there's no shadow on, on the text which is really annoying so anyway I had to 3d track that so as the establishing shots continue the credit apparates which creates a sort of dark comical atmosphere which I wanted to sort of express because despite it being an adventure fantasy mystery genre I wanted to create the comedy elements which is in Harry Potter itself I, I like that I like that edited by Avdin Khan I like that it looks good good at the same personally oh that is I'm still not happy with the editing, you know that, because I had to rush it and stuff, so I feel like I'm proud of anything, but I felt like it's rushed. We filmed this during the winter, and we filmed in like three separate days. Obviously, it was shot in different times, and it was really cold and stuff, and we got really ill over it. This bit is a fight sequence, and it was pretty daft because we were just we were just running about a lot, and it was it was pretty hectic. We were just like checking our ones around, and there was people watching us, and then we see little kids, you know, pointing at the parents and saying, "Oh, look at this grown boy is fighting with this stick and." And it was hilarious. Uh, did you see a squirrel there? Uh, Joe and I, we just were walking around and we, uh, there were so many squirrels around and we thought, you know what, it'd be funny if we actually shot at a squirrel. So I thought, I'll put it inside the film. So I did. As you can tell, we're just in a different area of Thompson Park, if you didn't know. So this bit, we filmed this in two different days, this whole dialogue. Joe's dialogue was shot in the second day and my dialogue was shot in the third day. And the first day that we shot was the bit that Joe and Josh had the whole crucial scene. Now you guys probably don't know this, but like a week prior to filming this, I had to lose weight to fit into the jacket because the jacket that I ordered that I'm wearing in there, well, it came in a really small size and it kind of really annoyed me about to lose weight. And if you ask like my mother and my sister, they, they would tell you that I had to, I just stopped eating for the whole week and I can gain and lose weight really fast and obviously I gained weight and you guys you know it's, it's a shame that you guys can't really tell in the film but that's what I had to do so yeah hard work <laughs> yeah the, this bit I felt kind of bad because um wait hopefully the hand looks really realistic <laughs> which it doesn't but I felt kind of bad because I had to pour fake blood everywhere on the trees so sort of vandalize the tree and this was after we got sort of a severe reprimand of the park ranger guy saying we can't film in Thompson Park which was kind of annoying because I, I said to them it's a public place you know I thought we should be allowed to film here and he went no you need permission I said oh it's for a short film for film studies and he said oh okay fair enough whatever on that shot there by the way the one that you see Jaws in pain I told Joe to remove my bags because I was moving all the equipment and then he had to move the bags and stuff but he forgot to so he left the bags in the background and the camera stand and I had to sort of edit the camera stand and the bags off so that was one of the reasons why the editing took a lot longer yeah there's the fake blood um 
Right. Yeah. Where's the infamous brother of yours then, eh? <clears throat> He's out. Until filthy muggles and low life traitors like that mother bitch of yours. Okay, so this bit of the film, the first bit, I actually edited because the first footage that we shot and it was in Jaws area, neighborhood and um, we filmed this in a proper, really rainy day and Jaw, oh, oh, I love Jaw, he's such a good sport. He actually went Khalifa, I mean barefoot. You can see him walking, he's walking there in barefoot in the rain, it was really cold. His socks got absolutely wet and everything. And um, yeah, the clouds you can see looks fake. It's because my pencil teacher told me to make it look a lot darker and everything. Um, yeah. This bit. Um, Josh is screaming. Oh, he was screaming for just a long. Kept on screaming, and he was brilliant. He was such a good screamer. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, I, I feel really bad here because um, the fake blood that you see Joe having there, um, he was actually. Um, not enjoying that fake blue. Normally fake blue tastes nice and stuff, but uh, this fake blue that I prepared for Joe, it went off. I prepared it the night before, but unfortunately, I believe the peanut butter went off because the peanut butter which creates the texture of the blood went off. So it, Joe was actually gagging it like that. Uh, the girl here you can see is Nikki. Um, she's great in this. We filmed this during school times because that's only the time we could catch her. And we filmed this whilst we we're doing our play called The Importance of Being Earnest. Hence why when you see the flashback scene, uh, you see me without any facial hair. Because I was doing the play, I had to get all my facial hair off. So I was like, oh no. So, you know, I filmed this bit, the outside bit first. So I was like, yay. But because it was flashback, I was like, you know what? I don't really need it. So that'd be all right. Yeah, but interesting fact here. Nikki, who plays our protagonist's girlfriend, she wasn't meant to be the main cast for the female. Um, it was supposed to be uh, another friend of ours. But unfortunately, she wasn't able to do it because she was busy with her work and stuff. Um, ooh, this this bit's nearly going to go and be the killing scene, right? Yeah. Oh, wait for it. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I I killed, I killed her. My baby sister sees that scene and she's like, oh no, she, she it's, it's funny, it's hilarious. It was really cold and I was really ill. You could see there, I'm probably like, what, like that. Um yeah yeah, but it, it it's funny because um I love this film had to be dubbed because we were ill. My voice was gone, so th the scream that I do there, it was dubbed obviously, and I couldn't. I couldn't scream even after when I got to the editing process I was still ill so I couldn't scream so I had to like overlap two of my shortened screams in there. If you're wondering why I'm using this different footage of myself and I've got more facial hair it's because I, I honestly could not watch this film throughout and just you know comment on it. I got stopped because I had to help my sister move furniture and stuff. This is being filmed in a different day. Anyways I hope you guys enjoyed you know the oral rhetorical director com director's commentary and reflective analysis. Um, if you want more um if you guys want more stuff click on these um videos up here for you know like the bloopers and outtakes the the uh the auras oracle playlist you know just 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 anything click over here um yeah that's pretty much all that's pretty it, much it for now thank you for watching this video um more videos coming soon i'm tired and I shall bid you farewell. Bye! Mm -hmm. Rah. <laughs> ah.